I'm standing here in a section of degraded thicket and this is a herbivore exclusion plot that Rob Duca set up for his PhD. He's got some set up across the landscape, uh, with eight in total. We've used four, uh, four of these, uh, we've used three of these to set up a, a herbivore experiment with spectrum. So what he did uh, in these plots was he put in a bunch of different species, plants, uh, tree species, to test the effects of frost. And this is a non-frost zone. And the plants did really well up here. But crucially, when he, when he left and he packed up the experiment, he took out the plants and then he put spectrum. He planted already rooted cuttings into these cages. And now we've adapted um, this growth. He, he did it just to see what, what would happen. And, uh, but now we're, gonna, we've, we're adapting this experiment to test the effects of herbivory on spectrum. So let's head up to the next slope. You can see this is all should be really dense thicket, lots of spectrum uh, and lots of trees. The trees are really struggling now that it's been degraded. And so here's the next site. We're going to be using these two cameras, one on a time lapse setting, taking every three hours, and this bottom one that's going to be recording any animals that are move in. And so we've gone and changed the setup. These were two by two, then our one by two, and we now have some poor speckworm that were free from herbivory and now are going to be exposed to herbivory. And we've got another set of another set of individuals. They're going to remain free from herbivory as our controls. And this landscape gets a lot of herbivory. Let's just have a look at this this plant here. Can see there's a lot of bite marks on there it's really uh, dwarfed uh, lots of branching that's happening on it there's a little bit of growth happening this season but a lot of the speck boom you find here have been bonsai by the by the levels of herbivory here's our next site here are the cameras up there and yeah so these guys are going to be uh, exposed to herbivory. Um, again, some of these plants, interestingly enough, didn't do as well as some of the other exclusion exclusion plots, but they're doing well enough, and we'll see how they do. Now that the herbivores will come around, so those ones are going to be safe. And let's shift across to the last one. Again, there's our cameras focusing on us. Now, what was really interesting with this site is this plant was actually growing outside the exclusion area. So you can see this was the one pole. We've tried to get that thing out. It's so well sunk in there that oh, we've tried everything to get that pole out and we couldn't. But you can see it was growing outside and there's a stem that grew inside the cage and then it just shot right up at the top of the cage. We thought it was magnificent, a plant from the inside that was doing so well. But actually it was this bonsai plant on the outside that then grew in and just shot up as soon as released from herbivory. And so, yeah, we're expecting these plants to be knocked back quite substantially. Now you might be thinking, well, maybe the herbivores won't come close to these cages, but that being so herbivore, um, having su such a level of herbivory does indicate that. And we've got kudu dung right there. Uh, where there's lots of dung all over this landscape because of the uh, because of the herbivores and um, yeah so we've also got here uh, these plants are going to be in the exclusion so the whole idea is to track how these plants grow in response to rain and how they get knocked back down in response to herbivory and to compare the rates of growth between these between these two plots and we wouldn't have been able to have such a great experimental setup had Rob Duca not decided to do some tinkering with with these cages when he wrapped up his uh, when he wrapped up his PhD experiment up here. And it just goes to show that uh, having a landscape in which you do a lot of tinkering in uh, does kind of offer these these experiments at a, a later date. Uh, it's fantastic to have five-year-old well-established speckworm. Uh, you know, they're going along and now we, we're introducing herbivory. How are these plants going to respond? 
I'm hoping that they're going to be quite robust and uh, at, le at the very least survive. I'm pretty sure they will survive. But uh, yeah, hopefully they can also maintain some of their biomass. I mean, let's just have a look at this this specky over here. Oh, you can see that he's really he's growing along the ground. I mean, this this is great in terms of ecosystem engineering. Those branches are trapping water, trapping silt. But you can see the levels of herbivory. Um, you know, lots of or almost every apical. This is new growth. Happened, uh, but. Uh, you know, that's happened since the herbivory, but almost every little bit here has been chopped off. And that looks like kudu. Usually kudu will bite and then they, they, they bite and then they pull. And so you'll, you'll get them. So this is mostly kudu damage. And um, yeah, so the, the plants are looking pretty, pretty small. You can see the crassula has been beaten up quite a bit also by the herbivores. And it's just finish off with a money shot uh, look at one of the landscape when that's pretty intact thicket you can see that a lot of the trees there are still stressed from the drought we'll see whether they recover or not and yeah you can see the degraded thicket down there uh, lots of degraded thicket over there beautiful landscape to be working in and hopefully a landscape that we can be helping to restore and it's trying to figure out these kind of dynamics uh, herbivores rainfall uh, rooting success all these kind of things that's going to help us do it so here we're looking at cages that we set up in 2014 or 2015 so at least five years that they've been here and Rob Duca planted some speckworm inside there before he left and this is how they're doing and one of the things we saw is like wow check this check this plant out growing all the way from the top there it's like it's doing fantastically why is it not as tall as those other yeah you know, why aren't the others as tall as this and we can kind of look down here and here's a here's a plant that was growing outside so there's the cage here and it's growing outside and then you see it's quite a big plant that's quite a fat stem down there look how fat that stem is and then look it's actually branching and then it's the one that's growing up up here so as soon as it's got a little bit of protection inside it's actually the, the stem is growing inside there and then there's the odd kind of side shoots coming up it's growing up 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 and up and up so obviously the as it was growing up the kudu and the herbivores couldn't get to that apical mirror stem and it's growing like crazy so while the rest of the plant is sitting, you know, completely kind of browsed down, you can see that there are lots of little browse stumps. There's a bit of browsing there. See, that's been bit bit off over there. Um, you know, this is looking like quite a little bonsai speck worm. And the moment, the moment it just had a little bit of protection, it could just grow, grow up, 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 and up, and out. I mean, just let just look at that so that's with herbivory that's without that's just a little bit of herbivory protection and it can it can go almost uh, 1.5 meters and taller quite fantastic